Humanity is experiencing a dramatic shift to urban living. Perhaps this is the greatest human environmental experiment of all time. The cities themselves are so fascinating to me. The urbanization is arguably one of the biggest social transformation of our time. Because more and more cities will be built in the next coming decades. And we have this really narrow window of opportunity to get things right. This is a really important issue. She is well in front of the times and her work is absolutely poignant to the problems of the day. A hundred years ago, Seoul had 200,000 inhabitants. Today, metropolitan Seoul is home to more than 20 million people. In 1900, a mere 10% of the global population were city dwellers. Now more than 50% of the world's population live in cities, and the figures keep rising. The scale, the magnitude, the speed, everything is so different, so huge, and the density is really high, and you see this very vibrant street like this one. <laughs> Cities have for centuries been the cradles for new ideas, political revolutions, industrial innovations and economic development. Just as a computer network can process algorithms better with more connections, it seems that more connections between people, as in cities, fuels economic growth and innovations. Cities are the place where the cultural technological innovations are happening and where the financial and knowledge capacities exist. So they are also where the solutions to many of our problems exist. The lure of a better life attracts millions of people to the cities of the world every year. In just two generations, Lagos went from a population of 1 million to 21 million. Projections show that if Nigeria's population continues to grow, Lagos could become the world's largest metropolis, home to perhaps 85 million people with drastic environmental consequences. There's a saying that says sustainability will be won or lost in cities. I think I will be going one step further by saying the sustainability will be won or lost in cities in the global south. Nowhere in the world has the scale and speed of urbanization been more overwhelming than in China, with possibly the fastest and largest migration of a human population in history. In just 30 years, nearly 500 million people have moved from rural areas into China's major cities. This is how China grew its economy at a stunning pace. But it has also resulted in polluted air and contaminated rivers and soil. It is just an extreme example of a problem affecting a huge swathe of northern China. Of course I want to leave, but I cannot afford to. I live here. The whole city and the whole country is polluted. You have to go abroad. Cutting down on the urban ecological footprint will be crucial in order to do something about climate change. Hello. Being an expert on this, Chu M. A. Bai was invited to the 48th session of the IPCC in South Korea. Cities play a huge role. If you look at the CO2 emission, they emit 75% of all final energy use related CO2. And many cities actually really realize this fact. And many of them actually already started to set really ambitious targets to cut their emission. And some even targeting at zero, net zero emission cities, which is really exciting. And I really believe cities will be one of the most active and effective agents for combating climate change in the future. It could be argued that there will not be a sustainable world without sustainable cities. So now many cities try and sometimes succeed, at least in part, in becoming smart, green and carbon neutral. We need to approach cities as a human-dominant, complex ecosystem and manage them as such. The ecosystem approach incorporates nature into urban settings. 
If you look at urban systems, they are open systems and they have very porous boundaries. They have constant exchange of material, energy, people, knowledge, finance, all sorts of things with the external world. So in order to make this urban metabolism or these flows more sustainable, first of all you need to reduce the inflow and then you need to increase the circular flows so that you, know, you don't have too many throughput. And then you also need to reduce the output, like the pollution, air pollution, water pollution, or the waste that goes out of the urban system. That's how you actually can make the urban systems more sustainable. Today, Chui Mei Bai is recognized internationally as a thought leader on urban sustainability. But it took many steps to get there. She was born in China during the infamous Cultural Revolution that paralyzed China politically and economically for a decade. I think almost every intellectual at that time was sort of sent to the countryside to be re-educated. So my mother was sent into a really remote um, village and I remember when going there with her. Yeah. But I think I was really too young to understand anything what is really going on there. After she moved from China, Chua Mei Bai studied and worked in Japan for many years. She's now an Australian citizen and a professor at the Australian National University. Her research on how to make rapidly growing cities more sustainable is a fairly new academic area. Traditionally, many schools like this were environmental science. The name Environment Society is very much a message that it's environmental science, but social science, it's about people and the environment. And environment problems are people problems. And where do most people live? Most people in the world increasingly live in cities, live often in very big cities. So the study of urban sustainability must be about people in their environment. So it's, it's an interdisciplinary pursuit, and it has to be that. So we're having to look at the engineering behind it. We have to look at the environment side. We have to look at the human aspect of it. And at the same time, we need to take the and take a systems approach and bring it together. It's sort of a new emerging discipline that brings together many people and many things. And I think Shumei is a fantastic example of someone who very naturally works in exactly in that mode of research. So I think she's quite inspiring to many people in the school and she's showing a different way of tackling some of these problems. She's a very diligent researcher and teacher, but I, I, I think the standout, and if you just look at the authorship of the research work, is a very effective collaborator. She's often quiet for a while in a big meeting, but will then step in with a really good insight. She's been a wonderful contributor to the committees that I've been involved in as well. Chua Mei Bai spent much of her time working internationally, but she also has time for her PhD students. She's a positive person, and when we are in trouble, she always uh, encourages us. She knows when to apply pressure, um, and so far I've yet to get to that point. So. She is more like a friend along the way of my studies, and very supportive. And the students not only see the scientific side of her. Could I say she is good at cooking? The sushi she made is, is fantastic. She likes reading novels. I learned from her. Just keep reading and you always can learn something from your readings. Yeah, she's a woman beautiful inside and outside. Oh. <laughs> The beauty of a city like Sydney in Australia attracts millions of visitors each year. The challenge for the future is how to make cities sustainable. The message from Chuemei Bai is that in the future we will need drastically new ways of planning, building and governing cities. Cities are very often not really getting enough attention and city matters are very often left to the hand of local government. But they shouldn't be. It should be everybody's affair.